Nobody puts baby into a corner. <laughs> She's coming for my bloodline. Bruna! You will pay for this! When we attach ourselves to these people, Richard. Do not think it is our choice. Because it is our destiny. Hello, everybody. I am Joe Otterson, senior TV reporter at Variety, and I have the distinct pleasure today of being here with the one, the only, Utrid of Bebenbur himself, Mr. Alexander Draymond, star of The Last Kingdom. What an intro. Thank you, Joe. In the season five, the last season of The Last Kingdom, you actually get to make your directorial debut in episode two. How long have you wanted to really kind of get your teeth wet with directing? For a long time, it was a question of finding the, the right timing because once we start shooting, I'm pretty much booked out. Fitting a directing venture into that is not easy. We knew that it had to be within the first block of shooting so that I could do the prep before we started shooting. And then we did the post and, you know, in little nooks and crannies we found within the schedule. I mean, there was a deadline I had to meet for edit notes and I would do a shot and then run to my computer and give notes. I'd be on the phone with my editor and then run back in front of the camera. It was, <laughs> it was a trip, but it was worth it. It was one of the best experiences of my life. I had a, a lot of support from the whole team especially from the producers, they really did whatever they could to, you know, accommodate the time. But yeah, it was hectic. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It was it was definitely the most stressful thing I've ever done. What made you want to direct? Was it something you've always aspired to do or what kind of inspired you to do it? I mean, when I first started out in, in acting, I did not think I was going to go into directing. But then the more I was in front of the camera, the more I just realized that I was thinking like a director and I had all these ideas that I wanted to put to fruition. I just love the relationship between a director and an actor and being an actor myself, I know what kind of direction I would want to receive and how I would want to receive it. Were there any directors just in general that you kind of look to um, as influences as you were prepping your episode? To be honest, more people that I'd worked with rather okay. than, you know, directors, whose work I'd seen because what you see on the screen is one thing, but then how you get there and how they work is another thing. Was there anybody who gave you any trouble? Like I said, any, any prima donnas, you know, like Mark Rowley or anybody just, you know, <laughs> not in. a single person. No. For anyone watching, I'm going to get into some specific stuff now for the episode. So spoiler alert, Rita has taken over Everwitch and Sigtrigir is there, you know, fighting in the courtyard. And there's just that moment where he has, I think it's like a spear with like the flame, like kind of like a torch almost at the end of it. And he's just like swinging that around I me. Mean, that was just mm -hmm. such a great, just primal, just exciting yeah. moment. Ace just killed that scene. You know, all I had to do was point the cameras and th this this fight was choreographed by uh, our stunt coordinator, Levent de la Jacques, and, uh, and uh, this, the fight master, uh, Thomas, who is also my stunt double. They studied up the fight and the way it works, we they come up with a choreography and then uh, the director and the actor looks at it and the length of the fight, et cetera, you know, you have an idea of how, how you want to shoot it, obviously. And actually the, the fire idea was uh, Leventa's, um, Leventa's doing. He came up with, with that idea that he was going to stab that um, spear into a burning flag and then have that uh, circle and and uh, it reminded me of that scene in in uh, the last samurai what was that like as your, as your first time out as a director we always shoot on an extremely tight schedule and you start off the day already thinking like oh my god how am i gonna make this work and <laughs> you just have to prioritize and, and make choices on the go and know which shots are luxury shots which ones can you can you spare and you know which ones can you lose and for me all of that was was in the prep. I just, I just uh, prepped it to death. I cannot praise the team that we work with enough because everything you see in a frame is composed by so many different people that put their whole heart into it. This is also the episode where um, Ethel, Pl Ethel Flood, excuse me, played by Millie Brady, finds out about her terminal illness. Never apologize about the names. I get <laughs> mixed up myself. So what was it like getting to work with Millie in these very um, serious scenes? 
it was just such a treat to work with her because she has such a grip on her emotions and on her vulnerability. I feel very, very honored that she allowed herself to go to those places um, in front of the camera while I was, you know, behind it. My heart breaks. I have no words. Well then, I must attend to urgent matters. You had kind of touched on this a moment ago, but just talking about that fight scene with, with Siegfried, would you say that was the most challenging like thing to shoot in this whole episode? <laughs> that day was the most challenging day for sure, because we, we had that fight to shoot. We had to establish that Stiora was in that little grate but we couldn't physically put her in that place because where we shot the outside, there was just a little grade, but there was no space to put a person. So we had to take a shot, which was then going to be, which was going to establish that frame, but then uh, VFX her into it because the location where she could be inside was in a completely different spot. It would be foolish to lie, girl. A monster of a day. And we didn't even have a whole day to shoot it because it all needed to be at night. So it was kind of like a, half slash three quarter day. And that was the one that, that I always thought, oh my God, if I can make that one, then I can make anything. Well, Alexander, now, um, if we could, I'd like to transition to a little game that I have prepared for you. I have written down some iconic lines from films throughout history, and I'm going to draw them out of a hat here and show them to you. And if you could please deliver them to me as Uhtred would say them. Okay, first up. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a little, little more romantic this time, I promise. Joe, you had me at hello. You had me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> a classic. <laughs> I will get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. Pretty and your little dog, too. <laughs> Here we go. Oh man, it's one of my favorite quotes. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Um, got this. Nobody puts baby into a corner, nobody puts baby in a corner. <laughs> and and let me add one to that do not worry, baby. Johnny is here again, a classic. Here's looking at you, kid. He's looking at you, kid. 